uh, with you know a lot of sadness in my heart. There are no Spanish players, but there are German players for you to root for. Makes and this is maybe one of the most diverse lobbies we've seen in terms of nationalities coming into a GSC tournament. Really putting the EMEA in EMEA with players like Tian from South Africa. <laughs> we have Brick from Tunisia as well. So and two Greek players. I would say this is a surprise, but actually the fifth most represented country in this tournament. Greeks is not normally a European powerhouse, but it seems like the Greek scene is really uh, you know leveling up in in this set and really uh, showing up for this tournament. Yeah, and I am just now seeing that our command is active, so I do want to direct your attention to that. But like you were saying, super diverse lobby. A lot of these players we haven't seen in tournaments before, so it's going to be really interesting what they show up with. And I really can't wait. I'm hoping we can start the lobby in just a few seconds, because I do want to get into these games and see what these players have been up to. The game is launching as we speak, so the action will start. Is there out of these eight players a player that you're really looking forward to, Panda? I would say Brank and Bricks are the kind of the two veterans that we see a lot of, but I do like seeing different countries represented. I do like seeing Tian coming into GSC and, and showing up for South Africa, country we don't see very often, despite it being, of course, in this region. So hoping he makes a good showing and really hoping this kind of sets a precedent for other players from South Africa to also, you know, try grinding ladder and try making it into these tournaments. Yeah, for sure. So that is definitely something we will both be looking forward to. Also, people who came back from tournaments of the last set, like Sprix and Arigante, as well as Gluteos, who actually did really well in the German ESL um, Meisterschaft. Um, so that'll be very, very interesting to see how they compare on the EMEA level. And I see chat going completely wild looking for those codes. They will come, chat. You, you're going to get them in just a second but we will go into our game hopefully soon and this should be starting. Now, Panda, you just heard our co-casters talking about different comms that they're looking forward for today. Uh, I think it's no secret that I prefer the Eight Tempest comp uh, and I'm really kind of copiuming to, to get that come out, but is there a comp that you're looking forward to that you really want to see with the new patch? I would love to say Nidalee, but unfortunately Nidalee, uh, rest in peace, I think will not be seen for the rest of this set. Too much damage was done from Revan in GSC1 and uh, more decided that she no longer will be able to be a viable carry in this set. Unfortunately, uh, alongside I think as, as they mentioned the deaths, the, the uh, tier 1 carries aren't really going to be I think as effective despite those buffs. Uh, the meta has just it's just so wildly different to what it was in the past and mostly going to come down to you know as we mentioned dragons despite some small nerfs coming into Deja and Shoyu for this patch I still think it'll be a very relevant part of most player strategies. Yeah I agree and we are on Simjol's board who is currently looking to maybe find a trainer angle maybe go for that Corky that is so competed does have the Senna, does have the Tom Ken, just a comp that I like to play quite a lot. So uh, definitely not a terrible start to go out with here as the rest of the players are gearing up in our first PvE rounds. Look at the top right, the Mirage for this game one will be Pirate's Greed. So good econ early on if you find a Leona and a, and a Yona, you can slot those in, get that extra gold for the start. But usually not going to be, uh, you know, a Mirage tree you want to go into deep into the late game because it's just not going to give you board strength, not going to give you overall power to try and beat out other players at stage four and stage five. So very important to keep note of for most of these players, especially uh, if players are considering going Deja, maybe you won't do so in this game. Yeah, uh, definitely. And while we are getting into those first stages of the game, I do want to remind you that obviously due to technical reasons, we can only follow one lobby. Augment's coming in here. Inspire may be interesting if you wanted to go for the Dragon Dancer angle. Um, but if you are looking, oh, it's a reroll. If you're looking for other lobbies, other players, feel free to scout them out on Twitch. Most of these players are encouraged to stream themselves. So if there is somebody you're looking for, feel free to look for them. There's probably someone streaming in all of these lobbies. It's going to be the Portable Forge, an insta-pick augment at the very start of the set. Not so much after due to nerfs of some of the different items and just overall reduction of the overall power level because it was kind of so insta-pick. I think Devs didn't really like that too much. Uh, but in this case now, still maybe the best option here for Simgil. And we'll be going for the tanky Anima Visage with a Gargoyle Stone Plate already built. So really doubling down on this front line and making sure that this trainer can slowly start scaling up into the late game, especially if you find that trainer three with recent buffs to Nomzi and all the different Nomzi sets 
eccentric comps you might be seeing in this tournament, like Guild Momsy even. Some degenerate stuff, some maybe actual viable comps. We'll, <laughs> we'll find out in this tournament what the real power level of uh, you know our beloved Nomsy is. To be honest, if you're in this lobby right now and you see this opener on some guild board, it is a little bit intimidating, I must say. The Tom Kent with the Gargoyles and the Spirit Visage, and then the Trainer with the Heimer too. It's just a really, really strong opener that will probably get him to win streak, depending on what everybody else has hit. So maybe soon we can hop around and see what the other players are up to. We're currently seeing the Augments powered by Blitz.gg. On the left side, two times, Gadget Expert has been picked up. And uh, yeah, anything that speaks to you, Araganta, maybe? Um, yeah, Mirage possibilities there. It's going to be Ascension for Brank, so just generic augment for him. Second one for Tian as well, just kind of the generic good augments. Arrogante going into Mirage right now, even though it is Pirate's Creed, even though that final Mirage board might not be the strongest possible Mirage variation, deciding to go for this right now and, and just doubling down on this Nunu he got early on. Yeah, also uh, Bricks, I believe it was, with a hot shot, also kind of locking himself in to going for a Cannoneer angle. Definitely a strong sign that this comp will be competed in this lobby as well. And we are currently seeing Arrogante also already slammed that Jolt Gauntlet on the Zena and is still exploring options going by what is on his bench here. And the JG on Zena, not surprising, her attack damage did get nerfed recently, but the upside is that she got her actual spell buffed. I played a lot of Cannoneers at the start of the set. Senna was always very rewarding when that you know, kind of big AOE pop-up of damage came off and we were able to kill uh, you know, the lower health units and the early stages of uh, these games. But now even more so, extra spell, uh, the Jade you can create even more um, and can be a very viable two-star carry for all of stage two, really. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we are entering the last fight before the carousel. This is always the moment where it's not that common anymore, but sometimes we do see players kind of going for the early level, AK the Alpha doing it as I speak, very last second, making sure nobody else can follow at that, trying to secure a win streak or at least stabilize the board a little bit here. Aranda showcasing just a very good, uh, you know, understanding of board strength in stage two. Has a very strong front line with the Leona two. Has the Nunu in as well. Has the, the you know, overall just the, the Cavalier and the Guild from Sejuani going to give health to everyone else. And just has one damage carry, which is really all you need in stage two if it's a level two like we're seeing here with this Senna. So a very well built board, but maybe not quite enough ah. for Senna by herself to do it. Her auto attacks not really as strong as they were before and really counting on maybe the clumped up backline, which we didn't see in this fight. Gluteo's managing to get out of the first PvP rounds with 100 HP together with Simgil, both the German players in this lobby managing to have a little bit of a high ground here, something I personally definitely like to see, but we are going to go in and pick up some items here. We are currently seeing the components on the left side of the stream that the players currently have on their benches, and we can see what they pick up, of course, in the carousel. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna see what it feels like to get a taste of my own medicine with a nationality bias here. <laughs> the Germans on top, no Spanish players here. So I'm gonna go with you, Mix. I'm gonna double down on the Germans, and especially for a player like Simgo, we haven't seen yet in GSC, or at least I don't recall a player we haven't seen maybe as often on a consistent top performer or, or you know player that's represented often in GSC tournaments. So hoping he also has a good showing. It's always difficult to, to tell with newer players or players that aren't as used to playing on the big stage if they'll have nerves, if they'll feel a bit too much pressure knowing they're on stream, and hoping it's gonna be a smooth ride for him and. He can really just play uh, some good TFT today. I mean, that is always what we're looking for, right? Some good TFT. But with Brank's POV here, I'm seeing something that I really, really like, especially in the early stages. Putting that Seeks onto Namzi will allow him to be really, really strong, even though he hasn't leveled up yet. So I love seeing this. You can do this, of course, with the ice cream cone. You can do this with Seeks, and it'll just make him actually a lot stronger in my experience. And so it begins. The Super Nomsy variations will start to come out of the woodworks and we'll see exactly which ones might be stronger. You know, players wanted to build Triple Chalice on, on some on Nomsy to try and make uh, the ult as strong as possible. We've seen, you know, math being done on Reddit by very dedicated players uh, trying to see what exactly the best builds are. I think this tournament with everything on the line will really give us a much a clearer idea of, of how to play Namzi at the highest level. And if it can really be a viable comp where you're just not even carrying a unit, you're carrying kind of a, a, a extra unit in Namzi. 
<laughs> yeah, you are. I mean, uh, especially like they nerfed some of his HP in the early stages. So I was like, ah, maybe it's not that strong. But like the Zeke's here really, really coming out to play, of course. Namzi being in the back line, something especially newer players often kind of miscalculate is to put him in the back line so he can actually get those casts off before he gets face palmed by some of the enemy front line. Uh, and that will allow him to actually do most of the damage here. Really, really nice to see that come out. So maybe some of the newer viewers that are joining the stream also have something to take into their ranked games. Of course, Ascension didn't really need to do anything here for Brank. He did have the upper hand here as we're going to go into the Crooks. And of course, always a centralized position for Namzi will be better. You do kind of have to do some positioning, uh, you know, theory in your head in terms of where you want the ult to go because you want to hit as many units on the opponent's side of the board as possible. So the diagonal ult will usually be best in this case and, and letting Namzi walk up and kind of position herself in the right you know, uh, direction is going to be always beneficial. Oh, I'm seeing this for the first time because I wasn't around for the last Golden Spatula Cup. We are seeing the economy of the players. And something that definitely speaks out to me a little bit is AKD Alpha, who has basically half of what the rest of the competition has. How do you feel about that, Panda, so early on being in a little bit of a deficit? If he was win streaking, if he was pushing for tempo and really kind of, uh, you know, stepping on the gas, it would be okay. But he's currently on, a, on you know, he's lost one game uh, in, in this last round. He doesn't have as many goals. He's maybe selling some units he has on the bench now, going to go up to 20s we're seeing there. So maybe not as bad as it looked initially. He was just holding a lot of different options on the bench to try and maybe keep a, a really a big fan of, of possibilities going to stage three and especially scouting the rest of the opponent's board, seeing if anyone is kind of locked in already into a comp. Players are playing Nomzi, for example. If you're building it up from the beginning, if you're putting that work to, to grow Nomzi to her, you know, tier three or tier four later into the game, that means you're pretty dead set on a few different variations of Nomzi with things like Cannoneers, with things like Trainer overall. Uh, so it allows other players to, you know, scout and see, okay, this direction or this entire kind of AP or AD tree might be more open for me to go down and hit my units. Okay, but something that's very interesting to me, because we were speaking about this in the green room before today's tournament started. We are on Gluteos' board right now, and he has something that looks to me like it could be a Xaya angle. How do you feel about that, Panda? Could be Zaya, could also just be Swain, for example. Pretty viable yeah. carry in this uh, set or in this patch right now as well, without really getting too many changes in this last patch and already being pretty viable in the patch before this that we saw last weekend in things like the Jade Cup, for example. Um, so definitely could be a Swain angle. Uh, quite a few units are able to utilize <laughs> the Shiv and the Rage Blade. Uh, pretty effectively, especially in the case of Gadget Expert. A uh, very good win streak augment and augment that really helps you stay very healthy going to the late game if you're able to double down on, you know, making as many items as possible that synergize with the augment especially. Yeah, for sure. Maybe it's just a little bit of my Hopium coming out. I know Xaya isn't in the best place right now, but I would still love to see her. Thrill of the Hunt being picked up by Tian here, who goes up to six, as most people will do on this stage of three, two. Uh, we will see the augments in just a little bit, so stay patient for that. Does have the scale score and emblem, which he, as Wida told us, got from Crooks. So definitely locked in to a scale scoring comp here. Lilia 2, big power spike. Shen 2, also very good for the frontline. Ideally would have liked to have that Olaf 2 right away. That would be maybe the biggest power spike you can get if you plan on building towards this Olaf. Of course, with skill scoring, we've seen many different variations, many different patches. We saw, you know, Diana and the Assassin Olaf at the beginning. Then we saw the Lilia coming in after buffs to her a few patches ago. And now I'm interested to see what route exactly, uh, you know, they decided to take with that skill scoring. Oh, Simuel actually with the Tiny Titans and 100 HP just looking so, so strong right now. Let's see what's going on here. We do have a Siphon on the board with a Spirit Visage and a Gargoyles, which is definitely very, very tanky. I'm not sure Gilteus' Varus can do enough against that. We'll take down the Siphon, however, so probably will be the dethroning here. Only one of these two German players will keep their maximum HP. Not too surprised if you're talking about Wind Streak Augments, Gadget Expert, Electro Charge, two very good, pretty generic. They can work with different, many different comps, but overall, two very strong augments that just give you immediate board strength, uh, you know, at any stage of the game, late game, but also especially early game. So, Gluteus going to be able to get this nice Wind Streak single still, like you said, uh, on top in the HP leaderboard. That's only because of the augment choice of the Tiny Titans, which will help him right now, but will give him less carousel priority. 
and will also essentially be kind of a dead augment going into stages four and five, not really having that combat augment slot. Yeah, and uh, we are seeing the board right now, Verison 2, definitely with the Gadget Expert so, so strong right now. We'll face Arrogante here, who has that Swift Shot on, emblem on the Senna. Probably not strong enough to make this matchup happen here, if I would be the judge of that. But let's see how it goes. Senna in the back line, pretty unobstructed. So is the Varus dishing out that static damage, just doing so, so much here. It's going to take down the enemy back line, and that will be the end of it. Teo securing another win now on eight win streak. Maybe if he levels up and finds that Soraka, we will see some disintegration in this lobby. I would be very here for that to have that in the first game of today. And the backline access from that static shiv, unfortunately, just puts Senna a little bit too low, despite throughout the hunt, but it's able to proc it at the right moments to try and stay alive and, and you know maybe win out that fight. But as you mentioned, I think Ludis just has a pretty strong board, but also just a very good set of augments to win streaks, stages two and maybe even three, and just find himself in a very comfortable position. Uh, when you have a lot of HP, you have a lot more time to really get to your final board and try and maybe go a fast eight, fast nine, and, and really build to not just get top four, but maybe just to outright win this lobby. Yeah, we are seeing the components the players have on their bench, the Hacker Room with the Crit Glove being left on the carousel as we go in here. There's a Tristana in the store for Simgil, who could pursue that, but is looking to go more of a mage angle with the Rise on board, probably looking for an Aushin or an Aesol. Uh, what would you prefer? I think it's more Aushin right now with the meta, but maybe we're going to see a surprise? I think ideally you want to find Lulu for sure, um, just because you're building on this knowledge from the early game. The Siphon early on was, was you know, a good pickup, but I think it's clear it's not going to be, uh, you know, in this comp later on to the game because you built a Shoujin really? on Siphon. You don't like Shoujin Siphon? <laughs> not considered, I think, BIS in anyone's guide. Uh, but We could all live here to see a surprise. <laughs> no, really. Just but of course, when you have two, uh, two items on a champion already, and especially a champion that's really uh, putting a lot of work uh, and, and strengthening your board at the current moment, doubling down on giving me the third augment item as well, despite not being best in slot, it's always going to be a good idea. Just, you know, extra cast, extra chomps from that siphon, and trying to get those extra kills. Not really going so well in this fight here. Rise is still alive, slowly scaling throughout this fight. Trade Stana as well. But it's going to be a close one in the end, Namzi doing its best, and it looks like in the end, Tian will be able to win this. The two trainers believed in themselves, stayed alive till the end. Tristan and Heimer getting the clutch win here for some guilt. Yeah, very, very nice to see that come out. Uh, definitely super strong, the Archangel, right now on any caster, an item that gets built quite a lot. And we are having another look at the economy. Brix is down to 19 gold, whereas the lobby leader, Simgil, currently on 61. Quite uh, yeah, a lot of diversity in this current econ statements by these players. I'm also always interested in the level and it looks like players are surely getting to level 7 in the next round or at the Wolves at least. And a lot of prevalence of Trainer and Namzi. I think to no one's surprise uh, with the way that Namzi is now, uh, can be built in many different variations. We're going to see which one ends up coming out on top, going to the late game Siphon doing its best as a solo tank, but not really considered, you know, a, an actual solo tank, like maybe Silas or, or you know, Idis might be. It's okay if it has a stone blade for now, but like we mentioned before, I think only going to be a temporary item holder until something a little bit more, uh, well, tanky is found. Uh, Siphon is a bit more kind of a mix between kind of that bruiser type doing damage as well in the back line, while also having pretty high HP because he is, of course, you know, still a dragon after all. I'm just looking at Tutuya still being 100 HP. That is a scary perspective. This man has been win streaking for 10 rounds. It's just really going great for him. And he is on level 7, already a legendary unit in store. It's not a Soraka, but it could be. So definitely something we need to keep our eyes open for. On the other side of the lobby, there's Rix down to 42 HP, followed by Brank and Euthanera, who are also on those 40s so they need to kind of stabilize their board find something here definitely uh -oh. finding something with the siphon sona on the side of brixton very good pickup for him corky can be played with many different dragons and apparently the game is letting brix decide which one he wants to go with it looks like it might just be idas in this case had the option for shio Yu and siphon we've seen corky especially the last patch played with pretty much everything uh anything yeah. that can give some some hp to the front line or just some extra utility and just let corky do his thing in the back line uh, we're gonna see uh, here Siphon in the case of Bricks now with that Silas, with 
uh, possibly the mage variation that we've seen before with Mamzi and Corky. Bricks also being able to pick up that bard and go for what will be a Mystic 3 once you can put that Sona in. Really, really strong against a lot of the current meta boards. Super nice to see that come out. And of course, he's going to increase his legendary chances every time this bard hits something with his ult. So very, very nice to have that on 4-1 as players are slowly but surely picking up these legendary units. And huge props to Gluteus, really, you know, identifying the strength of his augments, identifying Electro Charge being really strong with a lot of bruise, a lot of HP on the board, going into almost six bruisers with just Ferris uh, as kind of the singular item carrier with the, the gadget expert as well. And more than enough DPS uh, with the stall that the bruiser comes to give him in the front line. So just great to see someone that is really understanding how well these augments work together, especially and really building his comp for the augments and, you know, benefiting with that just crazy win streak, almost going to be at a 12 win streak if he wins his next round. I am so curious to see what these players are picking up as final augment. Uh, we are seeing them currently go for it, especially Cloteos could be super scary. Another scale score and being picked up for Tian now on six scale score. And also very, very strong board, in my opinion, would probably like some upgrades all across his units, seeing that Diana 1, Olaf 2, just not very strong right now. But the perspective of him getting there, scary. Five out of nine Olafs as well. Hopefully the rest of this stage is able to find a few more and get that Olaf three star, which will, I suppose now with the items being built on this Olaf be his main carry for this skill, well, skill score and comp. Luckily though, lots of dragons all around in you know opposing board. So definitely that extra damage will come in clutch from the skill score and trait. And it looks like it's, yeah, a big win here for uh, Tian and a big loss for Briggs, who was slamming TG to stabilize, trying to get anything he could out of his items uh, to just try and, and stop bleeding so much HP, but not quite working out. A 18 HP already, uh, halfway through stage four. Definitely not a good place to be for him. There's always this kind of scary moment when you are hitting very low HP before you even get into the realms of the treasure dragon to me. So 18 HP, really not a lot to work with for Bricks here, who has been losing and like you said, bleeding for all of this mid game, really needs to find something, anything, slam everything he has and spend all of the remaining 30 gold he had to, to get somewhere, we will hope that he finds a win in the next round, but we are going to watch Tian versus Simgul here, who has put the Shoujin onto the rise for now and has found a new frontline with Silas, but it doesn't look like it's strong enough to hold up against Tian's scale score on board. And I mean, with six scale score, it's not really too much of a surprise. The vertical on this trait is massive. If you're able to hit, as we mentioned, you know, Diana three, Olaf three going to stage five, you can keep up with all of the, you know, tier one, tier zero meta comps because you're able to hit this chase trait that you can't usually hit in every game. Skill score in four, sure, you can go for that and usually find some amount of success, get the top four. Uh, but skill score in six is definitely one of those more uh, high roll situations. You cannot force every single game, but when you find it, if you find those upgrades, if you find those three stars on your carry units like Olaf and Diana, you can definitely, you know, even get maybe a first in this game as well. Yeah, I mean, we are seeing that a lot of the players are slamming their items. Dimitri is still holding on to a spat, also very scary. But uh, especially Br Bricks, who is on those 4 HP, needs to really kind of get an out here, find something, has picked up a rod from this carousel, of course, with prioritized pick. Hopefully something that can help him get that momentum. But we are going to look at what the board looks like. This will probably be the Rage Blade for Corky here, so give him a little bit of extra dam in this board, but will it be enough to actually secure a win and stay in the game? Down to 4 HP really now. Any one loss will eliminate him with an eighth place to start the day off, not the place you want to be in day one of the Golden Spatula Cup. Finds a Yasuo, puts that in over that Senna too, because right now, let's be honest, Senna not going to do much to change fights. Uh, you know, now in stage four, her ult just not really going to do too much damage. And Yasuo can at the very least stall out a tiny bit more and help Tristana and Corky maybe finish off a few minutes. But we'll see how it plays out here. Facing off against what could be a very scary comp here. Alan yeah. has now gotten the Swift Shot emblem. 
Yeah, I mean, the pike just piking around, alting all of those units, but it does look like the Rageblade has paid off. Rex is able to find that win here, secure another round, live on for another day in this round of four or five, but he will need to do that again and again and again to see some sunlight in this first round. And with that, we also have to kind of talk about what that means for your tournament Day, right? Like if you go into the first round and you get an eight, that can be so, so crucial for your mental. It can be really, really bad. So you need to be above that, you need to be very, very strong and tilt proof to, to not let that affect you in the coming games. And Bricks forced to sell the Corky pair, the second Corky, just to be able to buy this Hylas, just to be able to maybe survive one more round, knowing he's such in a, in a precarious position, he has to do anything he can to just, you know, obviously not get top four, but maybe get a seven to six, get at least one or two extra points for the overall standings, knowing that without any upgrades on the Silas, on the Corky, he's going to be doomed coming to these fights. Maybe this is now enough with the Silas too. There's Easy Rot as well, allowing to, again, just stall out a bit more, let the Rage Blade build up. But Aesil, oh, Archangels, Bloodthirster, and Shoujin, nice, not, not going to be enough. Bricks gets taken out in an eighth. A veteran player when it comes to GSC tournaments, the representative from Tunisia, unfortunately, does not have a hot start to this day one. Yeah, I mean, it looked pretty dire, to be honest. And sometimes you just have to accept that maybe you took a wrong turn somewhere. And hopefully, Briggs, as a player that, you know, has been returning on all of our tournaments, will have the mental, will have the strength to come back from that even stronger and overcome. But we are going to look at what AKD Alpha is doing. Not a player we've seen as much as Briggs, um, who has picked up a mage crest here on the Lulu, actually, probably looking to replace at some point, but for now should hopefully help a little bit. 44 gold, a lot to work with, really, but needs to get this board online somehow. We were talking about the different Nomsi variations. We saw one, didn't do so hot, eighth place for the Cannoneer variation with Corky and Siphon. Now we're seeing that same kind of core, but instead now with the Mage variation, the Mystic with the Nami, the Rise with Guild and, Myst and the Mage as well to get the three Mage in. And of course, the Mage Emblem, as you mentioned, but still Silas and Siphon, the same exact front line for this comp here. Not doing so hot. Now level eight though. Now you do have the three Trainer in. Uh, and you know, is it going to be enough here with this front line still only a Siphon one? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, the Silas with the Sunfire and the Wormox will do a lot of the tanking and hopefully the Siphon can get out using that Edge of Night as well as the Rage Mate, which will just allow him to really speed up and alter round a lot. However, Cluteos is probably the player you don't want to face now, dethroned from the 100 HP maximum health, but has found so many units, is on level 8 and look at that Varus in the background, just dishing out that damage. There's no way that Siphon can survive that. The Varus is just gonna finish it here and AK down to five HP. Every loss now could be his last. A loss, but not a devastating one. Still manages to stay alive, taking only nine damage in that last fight. Could have been worse if the fight ended a little bit earlier. If it was a bit more one-sided, that could have been it for him as well. And the Greek player could have got out in seventh. Arrogante also now sixth place there. Brank, you know, evening out a bit at the bottom end here between uh, maybe, you know, from Uthanera downward, but still Gluteus, of course, has that great, great cushion, despite maybe losing that one fight, uh, not keeping up with the strength of some of the players that are forced to spend their gold early due to their dire positions. Still at 80 HP, guarantees a top four at this point, just with the HP lead he has, and, and probably even better than that, if he's able to navigate this stage five properly. Arrogante with the Soraka, with the Statics and the Swift Shot, but the Pike too will be doing the damage here. He's in the back line, he's onto that Corky, and he's going to start ulting around in just a little bit once the enemy units are low enough to actually get those resets on the ult. But it's not going to come to that. The enemy backline just doing so much damage here will take out Arrogante's front and backline, and he's going to take a big, big loss here. AK the Alpha also taking out of this tournament at seventh place. Arrogante maybe next in line. Hopefully, it can find something here to get out of this. On the look for that new new three, but still, oh, never oh. mind. The caster curse it. for the caster blessing comes in hot. New new three has been found. The front line, big upgrade for Arrogante, but will it be enough? to buy Pike time to deal some damage. He is really the main damage carry now in this comp, and especially really just the AI and the fight RNG of Pike jumping where he has to jump and not getting targeted by the opponent's damage carries. 
is the main thing that Arante has to hope for coming up for this fight against Simuel. Yeah, there's a Zoe in the enemy backline, and ho thankfully that Pike has a QSF, so shouldn't be obstructed too much by that, but he needs to get going. He is ulting around, but the enemy action is doing exactly the same thing, and it looks like that Pike can pick out some of the units. There will be another ult coming out of that Aeosian, but maybe the Nunu can do something about it, oh. eats it up, and that should probably be the win for Arrogante here, who still has that Twitch in the backline. Twitch one doing the work, really, while Nunu and Pike take out the rest of the team. I think the fight MVP was definitely Twitch there, surviving, you know, <laughs> with 10 HP and still dishing out damage, doing what he could. And more than anything, giving the entire team that extra attack speed buff is the big thing. Going to now the stage five carousel is maybe the time to get something like a Yasuo with a Cavs pad. If you're looking to upgrade your board, if you're playing four Cavs already, this is the way to do it. Arrogante finds the perfect units and emblem combination coming into this nice. carousel. Yeah, I, I think it was Wida who said that before the games. If you get a Yasuo with a Cavalier spot, it's basically win. Um, I'm not sure it will be true for Arrogante because uh, there are some people in this lobby who are looking mighty strong, but it will definitely help to get into the realms of top four. We are on Tiansport who has found the scale scorn, so maybe they have found him also with a pike and a scale scorn emblem, looking really hot with those Diana and Olaf 3. Not just that, but these items are literally perfect. Yeah. If you Google, you know, skill scoring guide, BIS That's items, probably a this is what it looks like. <laughs> this is what has been showing up for every sales score variation with Olaf and Diana. You find the three stars when you need to. You're in stage five. You're not still donkey rolling to find these last upgrades. You have skill, six skill scoring, and to no one's surprise, it's an eight win streak for Tian right now. The South African player doing very, very well in this day one. Yeah, I mean, just look at what the Diana and the Olaf are doing. Pike, of course, also helping this team with just getting these resets. And even the Aoshin cannot do anything about that. Half of the team is AFK, while Tian's assassins take out the enemy carry. And we are going to hop on over to Arrogante, who also finds a win here, gets to be safe for another day as we get closer and closer to the Treasure Goblin. Every time. I hear Treasure Goblin. <laughs> I, I just love it. It's, it's just a great visual image to have in my mind. Uh, maybe maybe we'll get a you know a skin rework of the Treasure Dragon for the 7.5. You know, no leaks here. I mean, it's not the Treasure Dragon. It's just the little kind of Herald crab thingy. So that's why it's the Goblin. <laughs> Looking at the board here for with an era though, someone that has managed to make this Namzi work. We saw AK the Alpha and Bricks both playing a trainer, both going out seventh and eighth with a cannoneer and a mage variation. In this case now, Ethanera definitely seems to be making work for now. Has that Zephyr, which is gonna be hanging Diana, so huge, huge uh, you know, upside for this backline that would have been terrorized by the frozen heart, by the Ionic Spark, and by the Sunfire. Now Diana having to walk up annually. Pathetic for an assassin, really, but still it won't <laughs> matter because Olaf is onto the back line. Oh. Uthanera is out in sixth place in this lobby. Arrogante still manages to stay alive here. It looks like Wulubi Nav against his Varus, though. Oh, that Varus is looking mighty strong. Maybe there can be another reset, but it won't be enough. The Varus is going to take the win, but Arrogante, by the skin of his teeth, holds on with 3 HP together with Brank. They're holding hands on that 3 HP level as we go to what I like to call the Treasure Goblin. So let's see what they find. Jeweled Gauntlet for Brank. Arrogante, I think we saw shortly, but I couldn't catch it. So maybe we can hop on over there and, and have a look. If it's going to be something that really, really helps, it's going to be a giant slayer. You can't just, you know, pop that onto the Nunu. Not a big deal. Make sure his ult, his ability, definitely tries and kill whatever it is targeting, and just trying to slowly but surely delete the front line one by one, and trying to get that Pike to especially hit those resets. You know, getting those units. If you're not killing, it, at least very down low, so that Pike can hit that reset when he does end up jumping and using his ult as well. But the biggest thing I think was the Cav spat Yasuo and the Yasuo pair oh, as it comes Yasuo in. Oh, too. I think Arrogante should have us uh, watching his board more often. Every time we're on it, we hit him the caster blessing, <laughs> finds the new new three, now finds the Yasuo too. And he's Let's in a position to, to top four at this point for sure. Yeah, really, really nice. I'm a little bit scared for Brian because, you know, I always want all of our players to do well, but 
that is, of course, not the reality of how things work out in these tournaments. So let's see how this goes. Who are we going to meet? Looks like Arrogante is up against a copy, if I'm not mistaken. But it is the copy of Chun with the six scale score. And it's a really scary perspective. Let's see how they do. Diana is on to the back line, slicing and dicing through Pike it. Pike is being targeted. Oh, the Pike is dropping. I'm not sure it can do something against that. The Yasuo are trying its best, but there comes the Pike. Just going to ult that, and they will finish off Arrogante's front line as well. There's not much that Nunu can Rank do here. Rank to 15, here. though. Ranked to 15, Ooh. Arrogante also takes 15, but manages to eke out the top four, get those extra extra point really coming to the overall standings after this game one. Very closer for both players and probably very frustrating for Brank, but hopefully can bounce back and still have a very good game too. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, with how Arrogante's uh, board was looking like five rounds ago, it was really, really good that he found those upgrades when he needed to and could kind of catapult himself into the top four. But we are down to our final three of the first game of today. Tian with the scale score, it's just completely win streaking here. Gluteo and Simgold, the two German players are still in here, going to secure some decent points, but let's see who takes it. They are against each other. Chan Scalescorns looking to do against this. Ow, oh, shit. The ult coming out so, so strong, but it will not be enough. The carries are still alive. They're going to take out Simgil here. Gluteo's also taken a loss. We don't know against which copy he was playing, but we will see our nice little split screen in just a second. The power of win streaking in TFT, the early game win streaker up against the mid game win streaker in the final few fights of this game one tian we mentioned it he had a very strong uh you know potential with the six skill score being found he was able to hit everything else he had to hit to really accomplish his potential which is of course the three stars on diana and on olaf and especially just perfect items all around even has you know another ionic spark on lily as well just to, just to try and maybe uh share around the board that debuff uh, as we're seeing here on the left and on the right making sure every single unit is being affected by it, and I don't think Lucas Baxter has what it takes to fight this six skill from Stomp. The, the, just, the potential is just too high here. Yeah, I mean, even with the level difference of Lucio's being on 9 and Tiana on 8, the scale scorns are just so, so strong. I'm not sure if you have any options here, if you can find anything, of course. You know, Gluteos has some options to upgrade his board. There was a Yasuo 1, for example, but I'm not sure that anything he assassin does emblem. here is strong enough. And Chan finds the Assassin Emblem. It's, I, I'm going to call it this one's probably first, right? I don't think there's anything that's going to take it away from Chan in this first game of today. And there's now the Talon coming in, has the IE already on him, so just going to be yet another damage carry to accompany Diana and Olaf in their mission to really obliterate the entirety of Gludius's board. Gludius, of course, I think very happy to be in among the top two. He played a perfect early game, really able to, uh, you know, squeeze all the value out of his early game augments with the Gadget Expert, with the Electro Charge. In this case, you know, start putting up some big points coming into the standings, coming to the rest of this day. The biggest thing here is not trying to go first every single game. This is, of course, just 64 players qualified to day two. And being consistent and just getting these early points is the biggest thing for these players. Yeah, and I mean, I really love seeing the scale score come online and come to life here. There's nothing That's gonna be it. you can do. Tian gonna is it out. our victor for game one. Scale score on top. We saw this comp come in and come out of the meta with different patches. Assassin Olaf was the craze back in the day, but now just regular Olaf is maybe even enough because Diana can also.